Hello, everybody. Welcome to Back to Basics. We're so excited today to share with you some of the great things that are come along, coming along with our brand new firmware upgrade for Gen 2 cameras. There's a lot of meaty content to bring you here, so we are breaking this up into a two-part series. Yeah, so today we are going to be releasing the, um, the new IP address settings tool. And that settings tool is going to allow you not only to search for all the cameras on your network, but it will also allow you to find a new preview and control all the cameras on your network. That was a request through the user group. Glad to say that we're bringing that um, to the feature. So let's go ahead and dig into the new upgrade tool. You can get this at ptzoptics.com slash downloads. It's available now. And you'll be looking for version 2.6. Version 2.6 is what we're going to be showing today. That is going to be required to upgrade your cameras with the latest NDI firmware, which we're going to go over all of the benefits of that firmware today. And the release could be is it almost any day now to get that firmware. But we did not have um, the ability to release it today. So. First of all, the prerequisites to even upgrade your NDI license, if that's something you want to do, you do need a PTZ Optics Gen 2 camera or a Z cam. So Gen 2 USB or Gen 2 SDI PTZ Optics camera or the Z cam. So that is the good news. Z cams will be working. You will need your serial number and you will need a Windows computer in order to run this program. This is a Windows only program. Sorry about that. Now, uh, what we're going to go over today is using this program. Is this necessary for doing all the firmware upgrades? Yes. Okay, so this is kind of step one mm -hmm. for the firmware upgrades. So we're we wanted to make sure you. that everybody gets this tool. So what about people that have, like, what about you? It Who uses Mac? Yeah. They're going to need to use a Windows computer. To do the upgrades, but then they can yeah. still use the cameras use with the Mac. use the cameras with Macs, yes. But the upgrade, you need a Windows computer. Okay, yep. just needed some clarification. So uh, let's share this full screen, Michael. I want to take people through this, um, this portion of the presentation um, because this address settings tool here has been uh, upgraded significantly, and I really want everyone to download it and get it on their computers so that when we do our show next week with the firmware, we can all walk through how to upgrade it. So as you can see here, we have multiple cameras. We have 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 67, and 99. I wonder what 99 is. Oh, Hewitt bought himself an Intel Nook too. In <laughs> we were to thinking about it. <laughs> Jordan's saying, what do I do if I only have a Mac? Um, unfortunately, you will need to find a Windows computer to do this. Can you borrow a friend's Windows computer to do this? Yeah, you'd have to. You can? Mm -hmm. OK. So I apologize. Um, this is something that I, I asked for a Mac version years ago, and we still have not had one. So I apologize that. But this is essentially, what if you're a Mac user in the future, you'll be able to buy your camera with the NDI firmware on and it. And not have to worry about this. And you won't even have to ever do this. So I apologize. So the first thing here, for example, is I'm not sure what 99 is. So if we right click it, we can actually hit the preview button and actually hit the connect down here and get a view of the camera with an up, down, left, right. Now, this is a Z cam. So this, the Z cams actually don't have any control. We can, I believe, bring up the menu. No, we Does can't do that Does the upgrade tool show the camera serial number? No. We will need the IP your address? serial number. Just the IP address. OK. So that camera there, I know, is a Z cam. Um, so let's try a camera. This is actually one of our NDI upgraded cameras. Let's preview that. Disconnect from that one. Connect to this one. Now we can pan, tilt, and zoom. And one of the cool things is we can also very easily... I'm not sure. Oh, the menu button is down here. You have to hit OSD. Menu. And we can actually remotely control nice. all of the settings of the camera. I like that. So that gives us full control. And that's just that OSD button down here. What Will it work on virtual machine? I don't know what that is. Um, I'm not sure if it will work on a virtual machine. Uh, but as long as it's running a full copy of Windows, I would imagine, and it's on your network, of course, um, it should. Ted says, can you do the upgrade using a Mac running Windows in Boot Camp or virtually using Windows in Parallels? Yes. 
you should be able to. You, oh, you should, should be, be able you should to, be able to. I, using a Mac running Windows and Boot Camp. I believe so, yes. John um, says I've never it's showing it a Mac address that's unique to every camera. Yes, so the Mac address um, will be unique to each camera, and um, that was one of the, the one of the many things that was added to the upgrade tool. So let me let me run through the change log. So all the new cameras coming from PTZ Optics will actually have what's called NDI ready firmware. So in the next couple months, they'll be shipping with this firmware. This firmware upgrade process is really just for the cameras that have been already, you guys already have, and we want to upgrade them to the latest NDI ready firmware is what we're calling them. And I'll show you guys what that looks like, actually, uh, a camera that's already been upgraded and we'll look a little bit, go through it, because there's there was just a few things that our engineer wanted me to go through um, regarding multicast. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to take the right steps to make sure, oh, sorry, um, this is, here we go. I want to make this a little smaller. So it fits in there with what Michael's showing. White balancing in vMix. You can do color adjustments and black stretch, but you can white balance our cameras within the cameras on the on-screen display menu, but not vMix. That I so have. here's the, the things that the firmware is going to add, and I apologize it's not ready today. I was waiting for an okay from New Tech that didn't come. Um, NDI modes, you'll have three NDI modes. So you'll have high, medium, and low. And when you click that, you'll see that it actually changes the bit rate. And it changes, it sets everything for the mode that you choose. So if we choose the high bit rate, it automatically changes it to a very high bit rate that is compatible with the NDI HX um, settings. The other thing that we've added is presets 1 through 9 include focus. So the preset itself can, when you set your preset, whatever manual focus settings you have will be remembered and gone back to and recallable. How do you know if you have a Gen 2 camera? At the end of your serial number, it's, or your, yeah, your serial number or the model number of the camera, it should say G2. Not at the end of your serial number, but anywhere in your serial number, I believe in the serial number itself, um, it actually says G2 but also at the very bottom of the camera. Uh, you see the part number? It says PT12X or 20X dash SDI. And then the very last thing will say dash G2. If you do not have a dash G2 at the end of this, the, the model number, then it is a still a G1, and you have the latest firmware that you're going to get because everything's moving over to Gen 2. Now, um, you can see here that I have the 720p at 120 frames per second enabled. I'm actually going to turn that off because I was testing it with vMix to see if I could do a super slow motion instant replay. And the most that they support is 1080p 60, so there's no real need for us to be playing around with 120 until we figure out a software that can support it. Um, but they set everything up for you. And then once that's all set up, one of the things that, this is the key thing that he wanted me to go over, is that in the um, networking section, there's something called multicast. And multicast must be turned, will be, t multicast will be turned on by default. And that is actually the issue. Because multicast will be turned on by default and you may not want multicast. If you do want the camera to be able to be connected to multiple devices and computers, on your network, then you need to enable it. But if your network's not set up for multicast or you don't want to be having multicast traffic on your network, then you need to turn it off. Now, the other portion of this, this is the, the portion that is, gonna, is taking us through this uh, tutorial, is that the address is going to be set to 224.1.2.3. Now, what we recommend is because every camera has a unique IP address, every camera also needs a unique multicast address. And we actually, I actually had this issue, and this is probably going to be the number one issue that those of you out there with multiple NDI cameras have, you really need to pay attention here, is every multicast camera needs to have a unique multicast address. Does it have to be the same address as the camera, like 87? It doesn't have to be. But, but it makes that's sense. what we're, it makes sense to do it that way. Okay. Well, so that's what we're recommending.
Do you want to take questions now or do you want to wait? I definitely think we can take questions. I'm just going to go ahead and right now. So I'm going to do this now just, just, to, just to show this. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And I'm going to go ahead to information. Or sorry, it's um, system. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit reboot. So now that multicast address has been changed and saved. If you have multiple NDI cameras as we do, we had all of them set to unique IP addresses, but, but they also had the same multicast address. And if you have the exact same multicast address, there can be some multicast issues on your network. So that's the, the number one thing we may want to make sure you guys understand is that each camera needs its own unique multicast address in addition to the unique IP address. Okay. So will focus also work in vMix? Michael, we got to show this off. This is cool. This is now, has now been added. So let me see if, Michael, you can add my NDI cam, and we'll, we'll, we'll take them through this. Because I'm, I'm so glad you asked that, Bernard. Michael's going to try to add this wireless NDI camera, and we're going to show it to you. But this is um, really cool. Um, they added focus control, Charlie. I don't know if you were the one asking for it. Bernard. Uh, or Bernard. Oh, sorry, Charlie is it? Charlie's asking a different okay. question. Okay, there's Michael. All right, Michael, show me the new vMix interface for PTZ control. So we are going to, let's see, which one are we going to take here? Let's just take this one right here, and we're going to open up PTZ control, and then we're going to, so as you can see here, uh, next to, uh, you know, controls here, you see the uh, focus, and you can click it, and after you click it, you can then focus more or less depending on kind of what the shot is and how out of focus it is and, and what's the going cam's on. being weird so yeah that's about it yep there's a little focus button we nice. just saw that today so that's brand new we haven't seen that in a while but that just came out today so charlie says when the firmware is updated will the camera settings exposure white balance etc revert to factory defaults great question um, I'm almost positive that everything is going. Yeah, everything is going to revert to a new factory default. Yeah, don't depend on it having it, keeping you everything. Know, it's, everything's going to go back to a factory default. Um, the main thing that with the presets that you have, you probably got to reset all your presets. When you do the firmware update, it's actually going to give the whole camera is going to basically be wiped clean with a new firmware. Ted, you still can access the $300 NDI pricing. Um, mm -hmm. Since the licenses are not available yet, you have until that time, so you're good. We are so close. I am like looking at my email right now, waiting for New Tech to say you can release the firmware. Um, Sorry, I keep popping these back up. <laughs> can we use the eye without multicast? Can we use in the eye without multicast? NDI. NDI? You said in the eye without in multicast. In the eye. <laughs> yes, you can use NDI. Okay. Um, without multicast, um, in fact, that's what we were showing here. Um, if we go back, we can still have NDI on and turn multicast off. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm going to leave it on because I just changed the address to a unique address. That was we, we, The bug that you will get if you don't do this is that there will be multiple cameras trying to go broadcast on the same multicast network. And like if you have an NDI source in vMix and then you turn on another camera broadcasting on multicast with the same address, it will actually turn into that camera. Mm. Uh, and it was really weird and it happened to us. So you don't want that to happen to you. We talk about uh, yeah, Charlie uh, comments again. He goes, oh, it took me hours to get them all balanced. <gasps> is there any upgrade with white balance? Um, so Charlie spent a long time uh, balancing the cameras. If you write down all of the settings, you should be able to go back and go right back to them. Um, but yes, the, if you're upgrading your cameras to NDI, it's going to factory default the camera and all the settings are going to be uh, I lost. would write down all of your settings. Yes. Absolutely. Now, one of the good things is if these cameras are remotely, you know, if they're already installed, um, you know, you can, if they're already installed and you're having trouble getting the serial number of the camera, I'm pretty sure our support guys will be willing to just send you the exact serial uh, firmware that you need. The reason why what we're going to have is 
a landing page where you type in your serial number and it delivers you the exact firmware that you need. But I could understand someone who has eight cameras installed and they're all installed and you don't have the serial numbers and you want to update them. Um, we could probably, it's, they're all going to use the same firmware um, file for that specific model number. Um, so I could see us probably delivering you the firmware that you need for your update and you know walk you through it obviously and we're not even going through the whole update process we're just showing you the new um, tool here so if I were to update let's say one of these I would hit the config button make sure I'm happy with all of my IP information then I would hit the upgrade button and this is where we would load the firmware in we query the cam, make sure we're connected, and then we would open up the new file. I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to save that for next week, but we wanted to make sure everyone got the new IP tool. Everyone knows what's going on. So next step for you guys. Tom makes a good suggestion. Take a picture of your on-screen display menu with your phone. Yes. Or whatever setting you want to set. Now, I don't think we talked about um, the video plugin for the GUI now works in Windows Explorer. Um, the web GUI interface now, oh, the settings now um, impact the OSD menu. And this is pretty cool. Maybe we could, we could show this off. This is pretty cool. All right, so if we preview 67, here's the camera here. So cool with that shot. <laughs> it's a cool shot, but it's not moving. I wonder why. That 67 was my PTC. We have so many cameras in here. That could be the 20X. Maybe that's the, the, the Z 20 cam. The 20X Z cam. Preview. It might be. Connect. Or is that the NDI camera? Huh. Let me try. Um, yeah, 67, that's the NDI camera. So, one of the things that it should do is if we go into the menu, let's go here. Where's my, there it is, OSD. All right, so it brings up the menu there. So essentially, when we make changes on in the IP interface, it will show up in the menu. John says, what about using the backup feature then restore after the upgrade? There we go. What is the backup for if not to save all your settings? Um, the backup is, oh, that's a good question. Uh, the backup, that, that's a, that's a, that is a good question. Um, I don't know if Matt Davis is in the chat. I know that the backup is an essential portion of the firmware update. Um, it stores some essential files about the camera, uh, MAC address, um, license keys. Um, I'm not sure why it wouldn't save the settings. Maybe it does. I, I don't know. Don't take our word for it. I'm not I'm, sure. That I just, I don't know. But you're right, that would make sense. It's like we're doing this backup. Why wouldn't it save all of the um, settings? What does the backup save? I'll ask Matt. If it, if that, if, let's see if we can get an answer for you on that one. But that's our presentation today. So what I'd like to do is go to our uh, other set, run the credits, and we'll answer all the questions right there. Perfect. Sound good? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. I'll bring this over yeah. here. All right, we're back. So we're just going to answer questions now. Uh, we really wanted to get the firmware to be able to be downloaded today. Um, it we could do a firmware release tomorrow, um, but definitely by next Wednesday, we are going to have a show walking everyone through it. And um, hopefully the license keys will be available by then too. 
So we're just answering questions, making sure that everyone is um, can get this uh, download now and play around with it and make sure that you kind of have a good idea of how to access your cameras on the network and how all that works. Question from Jim. So the multicast IP address is operating on a different subnet than the IP address used for the individual cameras. Yes, see, I didn't know that. And that was something that I, I you know, a lot of us are thinking about, okay, here are the IP addresses on my network. Uh, multicast seems to be a whole nother range. Um, and that might even be the wrong terminology, but now each camera will have a multicast address and we have to be careful thinking about making sure that when we load NDI firmware on camera one, two, three, and four, that we go in and give each its own individual multicast address. And that was really the major takeaway from this, this back to basics. So thank you for asking that, Jim. That, that's really the major takeaway. We didn't want anyone worrying about that. That way, if you're preparing for the NDI upgrade, you can think about the fact that you need to start allocating multicast IP addresses um, for these cameras and thinking about if you're using a scheme for your IP addresses Maybe just use the same scheme which just change the last two digits to the last two digits of your camera's IP address That's that's going to be our recommendation at this point Claude Air is asking how to get video quality like yours Ah, so we are streaming at three megabits per second, which is not an amazing quality I really think it comes down to the lighting um, and the cameras that you're using. And of course, the audio is really important. Mm -hmm. I know these little uh, fuzzy things here look a little funny, but they really cut down on the amount of breathing that you can hear. And they you really... you watch this before, you know that that's a problem. You know, like if I go like this, this, or this, you can't hear the wind movement on the microphone because of these wind screens. So it has to do with audio quality, it has to do with lighting, and it has to do with the cameras and the camera angles. Every camera angle brings a new you know story a new a new perspective to your broadcast so adding more than one camera really helps scott's busted on me for my jeans oh uh, you got a hole in your jeans says, i hate to be the one to tell you but you've a hole in your jeans i said oh no oh uh, this is what all the cool kids are doing okay it's the first day of spring practically yeah All right, well, I know you guys were looking for the firmware. Uh, I was hoping to get it, too. Um, they, they said it used to sound like Darth Vader. I would, oh, I used to, yeah. I'd like, oh, oh, oh. So you could, you, could hear, you could hear it. You really could. So I know these little goofy things look funny, but I don't know what else to do. The audio quality is important. What do you guys think about the new light? There's a light. There's a new light. Ta -da! It's freaking hot. It really brings a lot. Ow! Hewitt says, when I think about new, te new tech, I start damaging my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That rip was no not comment. there like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> no. We were really excited about the show, and then uh, we decided to just back it up a little, one step at a time. Um, and we'll do a, the next show on the upgrade process. I have a feeling that the upgrade video process that we have already pre-recorded will be released on our YouTube channel. We won't release that video until you can actually get the firmware. The firmware itself is going to make your camera NDI ready so that once that's done, you click one button and it's, it'll work with all the, all the features that NDI has. A couple questions here. One from Yuda. Okay. I had a problem with my laptop that didn't do well with two RTSP streams. Will they have a problem with NDI? Hmm. So, actually, to be honest, um, apparently the streaming, and I thought, that's, I had the same question, Yuda, and I was talking to my engineer about it, and RTSP and um, NDI both have significant processing that needs to be done on the computer. So it's actually more processing than a capture card, which blew my mind. I don't understand why, because I guess the capture cards do a lot of processing of the video and then deliver it via USB, which is like a very standard driver that I guess it's a connection port 
on your computer and try, instead of trying to shove everything down that Ethernet port. Um, it surprised me. But what I was told is that that's why you pay a lot more for ca certain capture cards. Like a Magewell capture card could be $299, and an Osprey capture card could be $499. What's the difference? The Osprey card does even more processing and compression to let your computer have less processing that it needs to do. So RTSP is still going to be processor intensive because it has to decode that uh, H.264 stream, and the more streams that your computer has to decode, the more processing it needs to do. With, um, I think what I'm getting at here, and I'm, now that I'm talking through this, with the frame grabbers, if you're doing a, an SDI to a capture card, a frame grabber, we get in trouble for saying frame grabber, capture card, um, it's, it's sending uncompressed video, meaning your computer doesn't have to, uh, you know, decode it. So there's no processing. It just it's just there on the USB driver. So apparently these IP streams do require more processing. And I've I don't know if anyone's played around with NDI before, but if your computer's not fast enough, it's not going to work very well. And uh, I'm thinking I think to do multi multiple NDI cameras, you need at least an i7. Jim says, is the autofocus on the PTC Optics cameras are weighted towards the center? <sighs> I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I don't think so, but it could be true. People sure. are saying um, that they have seen LED bul Edison bulbs. <gasps> That's what we want. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy one right now. Really? Oh my God! That's You're what gonna we buy. Need. He probably is gonna buy one right now. Oh my God! That's what we need. Why do we buy these? Troy ones? says try and catch the thunderbolt. They're dimmable too. Darn it! Oh my God! We need these because this thing is freaking heating up the house over here. Hardcore. Hardcore. A six pack for thirty bucks. Oh, I almost got it! Did you see that? So close. Huh. Dimmable. I'm trying to see if there's a pattern, so if I can figure out when it goes right above me. I wonder if these are really that good. All right, we'll go ahead and try them. Home Depot has the LED Edison bulbs. We can look them up later. All right, we'll look them up later. We'll look them up later. <laughs> LED. Should we give Tom some extra time today and head out? Let's do it. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week with more information on the firmware. We're really pushing for sometime between this Wednesday and next Wednesday. We will see, though, won't we? Take care. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.